Uh, nice to see so many people back for the second day after a very fun uh, event last night at the aquarium. Uh, if anybody's new here today, uh, if you weren't here yesterday, just a few housekeeping things. Um, there's Wi-Fi in the room. I guess the, the login details are on the uh, little sign at the registration desk outside. Uh, bathrooms are just out by the registration desk and down as well. And then the poster room and the coffee breaks are, are upstairs. So you just go out, uh, turn around up the stairs and you'll find things there. So in terms of the program today, um, we have a couple uh, uh, both LC and GC represented in the in the keynote lectures, and then um, we have a new format today. In addition to the regular online uh, or uh, oral presentation format, we have the flash format format as well, which I'm very excited about. I think uh, just short 10 minute talks uh, sort of keeps things moving. And then uh, we have another event tonight, uh, whiskey tasting. So that'll be that'll be fun as well. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to PH to introduce our first speaker. Thank you, Dwight. So to, to start the day today, uh, I, we are welcoming uh, uh, Dr. Arnaud de Lobel uh, from Quality Assistance uh, in Belgium. So Arnaud did his uh, study in uh, Strasbourg in ECPM, and after he moved to Gilles Surivet for uh, specialization in mass spectrometry before coming for a postdoc in the so uh, University of Liège in 2006, so that's interesting for me because 2006 was when I started my degree in chemistry in Liège, so we probably like crossed by in one of the all way of the university. So after various uh, positions in quality as assistance, Arnaud is now uh, a director of uh, research and development and innovation, and he will give us like uh, his view about like multidimensional chromatography and how it interacts with industrial application. Arnaud, the floor is yours. Thank you. So first of all, I want to thank the organizing committee for inviting me. Uh, it's quite strange for me to, to present this today in front of experts of multidimensional chromatography. So uh, we've been using multidimensional chromatography for the last uh, six years at Quality Assistance. Uh, and you see that the applications that I will present today are quite different from what we saw yesterday. First of all, because it will be related to biotherapeutics, so much larger uh, molecules compared to what we've seen. And also the use of we do of 2 DLC uh, is probably less complex, technically speaking. Um, but uh, you see that the applications we have, the constraints we have in a regulated environment are also different. So first of all, a very quick word about quality assistance. So we are a contract research organization that was funded 40 years ago. Uh, we provide analytical services to pharma and biopharma companies. As you see, we are located in the south of Charleroi, so close to the French border. And uh, we are 250 today, and we work on many kinds of products from small molecules to biotherapeutics, but including today also mRNA, viral vectors, and cell therapy. So all our laboratories are on one site, and we do all kinds of analysis from mass spectrometry, gas chromatography, LC, uh, to uh, PCR, ELISA, uh, flow cytometry, and so on. If you want to know more, uh, you can go to our website, but I will switch now to what uh, interests us today. So the two dimensional liquid chromatography. So as I said, we have begun working with 2DLC at Great Assistance uh, in 2016. Uh, and today we have one uh, 2DLC system from Waters. So the first dimension is an H-class bio, so quaternary system, and a binary system for the second dimension. So uh, everything is coupled to a water level J2 XS tutor for high resolution chromatography. And uh, this system is controlled by Unify, so now called Waters Connect, for a full GMP compliance. And I will explain later why it's interesting for us. So we work only in multiple hard cut mode, not in comprehensive mode. We can perform up to seven hard cuts. And there is this at column dilution technology from Waters. So using these trap columns, and I will see, uh, we'll show later how we use it also for uh, advanced analysis. So we discussed a lot today, especially during the discussion uh, about comprehensive and outcutting uh, liquid chromatography. Um, 
for us, uh, at least a quality assistance, and for most people in the pharma world, comprehensive liquid chromatography is something that is quite complex. So there are some examples. Uh, I have shown one here about the analysis of antibody drug conjugates. So with hydrophobic interaction chromatography in the first dimension and reverse phase analysis in the second dimension that allows for the, the identification of the different peaks that you see in your chromatogram uh, by MS, though uh, HIC is clearly not a method that is MS compatible. But today, what we think, maybe some of you won't agree, but for a routine use and an easy transfer between the analysis, the use for non-expert users, this method is probably not robust enough for routine use. The data interpretation is quite complex. You need spe specific uh, software to do that. And it is today, at least, not yet ready for regulated environments. So when I talk about regulated environments, what do I mean? Uh, there are a lot of regulations in many fields, but especially in the, in the pharmaceutical world, about data integrity. So for use in a regulated environment, first of all, you need a qualified equipment. So a supplier that will be able to provide you with an installation qualification, operational qualification with a protocol with acceptance criteria that will allow you to use this system in a regulated environment. So if you have a homemade system, this is something that can already, already be quite complex. You also need validated software. So uh, the norm that is the most widely used is the 21 CFR Part 11 compliance from the FDA in the US. Uh, and all this is related to data integrity. And the transfer between software should be avoided. So you should not use one software to perform your data acquisition and transfer everything to another one to perform data processing and maybe another one for visualization. Why this? Once again, the, this is data integrity. So if you work with uh, people in the pharma environment, you may have heard about Alco A+. So all your data, I will not detail everything because uh, it can take an hour, but all your data should be traceable from the acquisition to the reporting. So when you have a report, you must be able to know who has acquired the data, when, if it was processed by the same person on a, or another one, what has been done through processing, a modification of the integration and so on. And clearly, uh, you need specific software to be able to do that. So, uh, as I said, we work in uh, multiple haircut mode, so I don't think it will, I will uh, learn you a lot of things here. Usually, I have to explain what is multidimensional chromatography is not needed here, but just a few words. So, as I said, we can perform up to seven haircuts on our system. And we have, so first, a quaternary system for the first dimension, a binary system for the second dimension, and also an additional pump for the ad column dilution technology that will allow you to dilute your uh, mobile phase from the first dimension when it arrives on the trap column, or use this mobile phase to perform some reactions on the column as I will show. So uh, once you have your first hot cut, you will send that to your first trap column, and then the same for the second hard cut. During the hard cuts, if needed, you can use this uh, additional pump in order to dilute your, uh, your mobile phase, either to dissolve it or to modify the strength of the solvent if you use reverse phase, for example. Uh, you have an optional desalting step of all the trap cabbages, and then everything is sent to the second dimension uh, sequentially for MS analysis, so here on our QTOF system. So what are the applications of 2D LCMS? So as I said, it would be much less complex uh, compared to what we have seen in the talks yesterday. Our first interest when we implemented the 2D LCMS was the possibility to use mass spec when you have some chromatographic separations that are not MS compatible. So the first uh, application is the characterization of monoclonal antibodies. So for example, the identification of charge variants uh, by ion exchange chromatography, the identification of mass variants by size exclusion chromatography. So all these techniques usually are not MS compatible, especially the ones that we use for routine testing. There are now some methods that are MS compatible, but they are not the, the ones that are the most used and that give the best chromatographic performance. So the interest in that case is to be able to know, OK, we have some variants. What are they? How can we use MS for that? So you have 
either ion exchange of size extrusion chromatography in the first dimension and reverse phase in the second dimension for desorting, but also to separate the different species if needed. We also have the characterization of antibody drug conjugates, and I will give you an example afterwards. So first, the identification of isomers, but also the identification of small molecule impurities or the quantification of free drug and related species in your product. So you have your antibody drug conjugate with drugs that are conjugated to the antibody, but you can also have some small molecules that are free in the, in the sample that can have a problem in terms of safety for the patient and you have to quantify that. So to the CEMS is also a possibility to do that. And finally, even if it's not the most, uh, most important application for us, for small molecules or new chemical entities, we can also have sometimes to identify unknown peaks after non-MS compatible AC separations. So usually these are uh, reverse phase separations and you need in the second dimension also to use reverse phase to dissolve the sample and uh, separate the different species if needed. So in that case, the ad column dilution technology can be useful to dilute your mobile phase and uh, allow the trapping of your compound in your trap column. But also the peak purity analysis, so the detection of co eluting species, when you have to validate a method for quantification in, uh, re, uh, in LCUV, you have to show that your method is specific so that you have only one species under the peak that you quantify and to the CMS can be an option to do that. So those are the main applications we have. Uh, I will show you uh, two, uh, one example for, on antibody drug conjugates and then some uh, advanced applications. So first of all, the, the characterization of antibody drug conjugates by HIC uh, with reverse phase coupled to MS. So what is an antibody drug conjugate? So it's a, non a monoclonal antibody that will have the possibility to uh, target specifically cancer cells based on the specificity of the antibody for the receptors that are specifically expressed on the cancer cells. And to this monoclonal antibody, you will link cytotoxic drugs via, uh, using a linker if needed. So this is very useful because you have the possibility to bring your cytotoxic molecule directly into the cancer cells. So in terms of specificity of your treatment, uh, it's much better to compare to chemothera uh, chemotherapy. Uh, you have much less side effects, uh, but you have some difficulties uh, because the quantity of drug that will reach the cancer cells is quite low. So you need very toxic drugs that usually cannot be used alone in chemotherapy because they would be too toxic. So one way to perform, uh, to synthesize this, uh, this ADC uh, is to link the drug on, um, sorry, I'm trying to find the laser, okay. So you will reduce the, the disulfide bridges that are between the chains, so between the light and heavy chains. And then you will use the, the thiol functions that are released to link your drug. So at the end, you will have uh, some covalent species, as you see here, because most of the, um, of the disulfide bridges are still present. But you will also have non-covalent species that you see here, because the disulfide bridges are, re are removed and uh, used for the conjugation. So in order to, to use this kind of product, you must characterize it. The number of drugs that you can put on your, uh, of, that you put on your ADC is critical in terms of safety and efficacy. If you do not have enough drugs, it won't be uh, efficient. If you have too many drugs, that could be some safety issues. So on this kind of ADC, you can have between zero and eight drugs based on the number of disulfide bridges that you have. One way to characterize this is to do hydrophobic interaction chromatography. And in that case, you see that you have a very nice separation between the different DAR species. DAR means drug to antibody ratio between zero and eight drugs. So here we have a mean value of four, which is common for this kind of antibodies. So here we have a very nice separation. It's not always the case, especially if you have some very hydrophobic drugs or hydrophobic uh, antibodies. Uh, so most of the time before using the UV detection in order to determine the drug to antibody ratio, you need to identify those different peaks and know what it corresponds to. So as I said, uh, HIC is a method of choice for the characterization of ADC. 
you can determine the drug to antibody ratio, the drug load distribution, but also the amount of naked antibody for ADCs that would be linked on lysine residues instead of cysteines. Due to the high salt content in the mobile phase, it's clearly impossible to couple that to mass spectrometry. So here I've given examples of mobile phase that we use for this separation. And you see that we are more than 100 millimolar sodium phosphate, but 2.5 molar of ammonium sulfate in the first phase. So clearly this is not something that you can couple to us. You can perform fraction collection, offline desalting, but it's time consuming uh, for low, low abundant species. You will have some difficulties in terms of sensitivity due to dilution effect absorption. So clearly 2D LCMS is a solution today for the identification of those peaks on the heat chromatic one. So I give here an example of, uh, that we have in the lab. So you can see here what we expect to be the DAR0 species, DAR2, DAR4, DAR6, and DAR8. But you can see that, especially for this one, we have a double peak and we don't know exactly what it corresponds to. Probably isomer, but that's what we want to show on this, uh, on this example. So we have performed uh, 2D LCMS with hard cutting on those two species. So HIC in the first dimension, reverse phase in the second dimension, and that's what we obtained. So for the first uh, peak, you can see that on the reverse phase, on the second dimension, we detect two different species. One that corresponds to the light chain with one drug, and one that corresponds to two heavy chains with two drugs in total. So we can conclude that these species correspond to this isomer with the drugs that are linked between the heavy and light chains. On the second peak, we detect only one species in the, in the second dimension that corresponds to one heavy chain, one light chain with two drugs. And once again, it's quite easy to conclude that this corresponds to these isomers with the drugs between the two heavy chains. You can do that on each peak. Uh, we were able to identify the zero, our two, four, six, and eight. So with different isomers here, DAS six, there are probably also different isomers that are not fully resolved, and we were not able to distinguish between all of, the, all of these. And you can see that we have some degradation species, uh, DAR one and DAR three, that we would not expect because each uh, disulfide bridge that is uh, cleaved should give rise to two drugs on your antibody drug conjugate but the, there are some minor species too. So we are able now to determine the average DAR value, that is 3.7, uh, quite uh, similar to what we expect and what we obtain with other kinds of methods. Um, and now, once you have identified all those peaks, in routine, you can use the HIC with the UV detection only. So that's one of the examples uh, that we use in the lab. Um, and now I will show you some advanced use of this to the LCMS system with the up column dilution technology. So the idea uh, that we had was to first optimize the use of track columns for advanced analysis. The first one was to improve the peak shape in the second dimension because what we saw that the, was that the peak was quite broad uh, with a lot of tailing. Um, and we thought it was linked to the temperature of the column, but I will show that just afterwards. And the second option was to perform on column uh, reduction in order to simplify the, the mixtures that we obtained on the, that we had to analyze in the second dimension by MS. And the second idea was to use affinity columns or immobilized enzymes in the first dimension, either for online sample purification or for online sample preparation. So first of all, the optimization of the track elution and uh, the influence of the temperature of the track column. So we inject adalimumab, which is a commercial monoclonal antibody, on the track column directly, and we elute it on reverse phase in the second dimension. The second dimension is operated at 80 degrees, which is quite, uh, quite usual for the reverse phase of, uh, of proteins. Here's what we have with uh, track column at room temperature. And you see that we have this peak and then a very uh, strong tailing, a very broad peak. And we thought that it was due to the uh, fact that the trap was operated at room temperature. We know, as I said, that the reverse phase of protein has to be performed at 80 degrees or at least at high temperature in order to avoid uh, interactions and to, uh, to have a better resolution. 
So we decided to put the trap column at 80 degrees, which is not something that is easy to do on the water system uh, because the, um, the trap columns are usually not heated, but we try to do that. And when we work at 80 degrees, you see that you get a nice peak. So of course, more intense and with the less tailing, so which will uh, increase the sensitivity in the second dimension. So the illusion is improved at high trap column temperature, which is something that we could have expected based on the behavior of proteins in river space chromatography. The second thing was to try to use the additional pump that we have to perform online reduction. So once you have, uh, you have performed your first dimension, your protein is trapped on the river space trap column. And the ID, instead of only using uh, bu uh, MS compatible buffer for desalting, was to put a reducing agent in the mobile phase in order to reduce our antibody. And we did that by using TCEP. Uh, we thought of TCEP because it's more stable than DTT. It works uh, over a wider range of pH. So it was ideally the, the reducing agent that was followed uh, in our examples. And you can see here that when we reduce a monotonic antibody on the trap column, we see, uh, so we have tested that at room temperature, 50 degrees and 80 degrees for the trap temperature. And you see that either for the light chain that is here or the heavy chain, we get several peaks. Uh, even for the light chain, at the beginning, you have only a broad peak, but clearly the reduction is not complete. And this is confirmed by the fact that if we use MS, when we analyze those different peaks, especially for the light chain, we have two Daltons difference between the different peaks. So that corresponds to a disulfide bridge that is not fully reduced. So we have reduced the disulfide bridges in uh, between the chains because we can observe the light and heavy chains separately, but the intra-chain disulfide bridges are not fully reduced. So what we did was try DTT to see whether it would work better. So we used 10 millimolar DTT in ammonium bicarbonate for five minutes. And in that case, you see that you obtain the lights and the heavy chain separately with very nice mass spectra, fully reduced chains. So we, we do not have those two Dalton's difference that we had previously. So DDT is a better reducing agent here in this application on the trap column. We also tested um, the stability of the solution because DTT is not quite stable in solution. So we put the DTT solution that we use for this uh, experiment on the HVLC system for 24 hours. So it was at room temperature and between T0 and T24 hours, we have no difference in terms of reduction efficiency. So we know that we can use for one day this, uh, this solution without any problem. So now we are going to reduce the sample correctly in the second dimension to reduce it if we need on the trap column. So we decided to test the affinity columns. So we used a protein A affinity column in the first dimension. The goal was to characterize maps that are present in complex mixtures, so for example, cell culture supermatins. Uh, protein A is a protein that has a strong uh, affinity for the monoclonal antibodies. So it will allow you to purify your sample and keep only the antibody and not all the components of the, of the mixture. So we used uh, protein A affinity column on the first dimension. So it's a step gradient for the binding followed by the elution by the modification of pH. And that's what we have in the first dimension. So a very nice peak. That's what we expected. Protein A is something that is quite common, but it works well. And it's something that we can use for hard cutting for analysis in the second dimension. So uh, we used in this 2D uh, configuration, the map back protein A in the first dimension a river space column, a strap column at 80 degrees, and a river space uh, bioresolved column from waters in the second dimension with mobile phases that are compatible with MS. And that's what you have when you inject 0.5 micrograms of uh, antibody on your column, and you get a very nice uh, electrospray mass spectrum that after the convolution gives you the expected mass at around 150 kilodaltons, with the different variants that you see here that corresponds to the different glycans that can be linked to the monoclonal antibody. So it works and we can analyze an antibody with a protein A in the first dimension, with a space in the second dimension. 
So it was only for a clean sample. So then we spiked the antibody in a cell culture medium. And you see that what we obtained in the second dimension, if you are in the drug product formulation, so a clean sample or the same amount spiked in the cell culture medium, we have exactly the same, uh, same intensity. So it works quite well. And you still obtain a very nice mass spectrum with the different lipoforms that you can detect in the second dimension. So you, we have no influence of the medium on the results, either for the chromatography or the mass spectrometry. We try to do the same with online reduction. So we reduced uh, the sample on the trap column with 10 millimoles DTT in ammonium bicarbonate. And that's what you get, the light chain and the heavy chain that are well separated. And you get also very nice mass spectra at 25 kilodaltons for the light chain and 50 kilodaltons for the heavy chain. On the heavy chain, you still see those different glycoforms that you have here that correspond to the different glycans on your antibody. So it works well. You have the possibility to analyze your sample either at the intact level or the reduced level if needed. Another thing that we tried to do was to use an IDS column. So IDS is an enzyme that is commercialized by Genovis uh, and that is widely used in the biopharma environment. Why? Because this enzyme will specifically cleave your monoclonal antibody be, uh, just below the inch region. So this will give you uh, first the fat fragment of around 100 kilodaltons and two FC fragments that contain the glycans of about 25 kilodaltons. And if you further reduce this mixture, you will get three species of around 25 kilodaltons, FD, LC and FC, that contains your uh, glycoforms. So why is it used in the biopharma environment? Because those species at 25 kilodaltons are much well, much better resolved in uh, liquid chromatography. If you want to see some small variants, you will have a much better chromatographic resolution here than if you want to do the same thing on the intact antibody. And if you use LCMS, the mass accuracy, the mass resolution that you will get at 25 kilodaltons is also much better compared to the intact antibody. So that's something that we do offline, usually uh, in a vial. The idea was to use this immobilized column commercialized by Genovis and check whether it would work in our system. So for the first dimension, we did initially a test with PBS at the eluent as uh, recommended by the supplier, but we, uh, we saw that the, uh, the elution was much better with 200 millimol ammonium acetate. And that's what you get after the first dimension for three different antibodies, so two monoclonal antibodies and one ADC uh, that I presented earlier. You see that we have some differences from one antibody to another, so you will have to adapt your earth cuts in order to get uh, good results. But anyway, it works quite well. It's something that is not easy because we have to do the reduction uh, with the flow rate, the digestion with a flow rate of 25 microliter per minute. So clearly on our edge class system, is some, we are the limit of the equipment. But anyway, it works. It's quite reproducible, so it's uh, OK for our cutting for 2D LC mass. So that's what we use, the Fabricator HPLC column. So it's the mobilized IDS with two, uh, 200 millimol ammonium acetate and isoquatic elution for about three column volumes at 25 microliters per minute. Trap column, uh, reverse phase, or, uh, as I said, 80 degrees. And the separation on the second dimension here is a map pack reverse phase column with uh, mobile phases containing uh, formic acid and TFA in order to have the better uh, chromatographic resolution on this kind of content. And you can see here that we have with five micrograms of uh, antibody on the column, this FC uh, region and this fab region, so with different variants that we can separate in the first in the second dimension on your chromatography. So we have two expected species obtained on the columns separated by R. If you have a look to the mass spectra, uh, we have very nice mass spectra, so the 25 kilodaltons for the FC region and about uh, 100 kilodaltons for the FAB region here. So here we still have one species at 100 kilodaltons, so the advantage would be to be able to reduce those species in order to get the three uh, subunits at 25 kilodaltons each. So we did the same, but we included the reduction step on the trap column. And you can see here that we have those three species, FD, LC, and FC, 
uh, that are well separated. And if you have a look to the mass spectra, you have very nice deconvoluted mass spectra at around 25 kilodaltons. And on the FC uh, subunit, you can see different variants that are related to the different glycoforms that you have on your chain. So as a case study, we tried to monitor the oxidation of a monoclonal antibody at the subunit level by automated IDS uh, digestion and online reduction. So it's something that can be useful to monitor the oxidation because the oxidation can have an impact on the efficacy of your drug. So we stressed uh, an antibody by hydrogen peroxide at two levels. We stopped the oxidation by the addition of methionine, and we injected that on the 2DLC MS system with online reduction. And you can see that for the control, we have an expected species, small amount of oxidized species on the FC region. So you have to know that the methionine that is readily oxidized in a monoclonal antibody is on the FC region. That's why we expect mainly oxidized species on the subunit only. And at the two different concentration of hydrogen peroxide, you can see uh, an increase of the oxidized species, a uh, much uh, higher increase for 0.2% hydrogen peroxide with the other, uh, can also detect a doubly oxidized species. So we use UNIFI for an automated identification. So UNIFI is used from the acquisition to the reporting of the data. That's what we get for the deconvoluted mass spectra and we are able to compute the amount of oxidized species in each sample. So based on that, using this software, you can put your sample in your vial, press start, and at the end, have your report with the amount of, oxi uh, of oxidation in each of the samples that you analyze. You can do that for oxidation, but also for glycans. For, for the amidation, it will be more complex because it's only one Dalton difference. But there are many post translational modifications that you can follow automatically with this approach. So, what's next? We do to DLCMS. Uh, there are some papers that were published uh, already a few years ago. Uh, one about 3D LCMS uh, for the characterization of glycosylation patterns, and one also with 4D HPLCMS using also trypsin columns and uh, a lot of different chromatography steps that allow you to characterize very uh, precisely your antibodies. So those uh, applications are today not ready for routine use. It's not something that you can do with a fully commercial equipment and uh, with a single software that is GXP compatible. But I think that in the coming years, with the development of new equipment, new software, that should be possible. So a few take home messages. So 2D LCMS can be used today in regulating environments for the characterization of biotherapeutics. The Atkin dilution technology offers new possibilities for online sample reduction. And affinity columns or immobilized enzyme can be used in the first dimension for automated sample pretreatment. So this uh, opens the way to automated in-process control or QC analysis at subunit level. So you may have heard of MAM, uh, which stands for Multiple Attribute Monitoring, which is widely used today uh, in uh, biopharma. Most of the time it's done at the peptide level after peptide mapping, but it could be done at the subunit level also, fully automated, fully compliant, uh, in order to put those results in a regulatory plan. And new developments will open even greater perspectives uh, for those people. So I will finish by thanking my colleagues. We did the work. Isabelle Francois who helped us to implement this, uh, this system in our labs. And I thank you for your attention.